boundaries of Earth and visit other planets. The Russians are putting their faith in their genes. They are part of a cosmonaut dynasty. Their fathers were very famous cosmonauts who in their time undertook very memorable and challenging space missions. Whatever method is used to select the crew to go to Mars, space agencies across the world know these astronauts will need to be psychologically stronger than any other before them. In Russia, the selection process is not so much about skill as it is about stamina. Valery Polyakov holds the world record 438 days in orbit. Now he's leading Russia's search for the Mars team. I believe that the extreme conditions of this flight, especially the time in a closed spaceship, means that we're looking for very special human qualities. These will not be ordinary people. They must all get along under the most difficult conditions. The Russian Mars program conducts rigorous isolation testing. Roman Romanenko is being put through his paces, isolated, forced to stay awake for up to three days, and subjected to an endless battery of meaningless tasks. It's a controlled version of the mindless routine of the voyage to Mars. If Romanenko cracks under the pressure, his dreams of going to Mars will be over. We need to study thoroughly the qualities of the astronaut's character. To do so, we must violate the major laws of life and mind. For example, the regime of non-stop activities could last for 64 or 72 hours. The Russians have decades of experience with long-term missions in space. Through trial and error, Russia built the Mir space station, giving cosmonauts and astronauts a chance to stay in Earth orbit for months at a stretch. Jerry Lininger thought he was mentally tough until his mission on Mir. I was actually shocked of my time on Mir of how isolated and how cut off and stuck with myself that I felt during that time and also of how vulnerable I was. And I saw in my crewmates some uh, pretty serious psychological problems developing, people kind of going off the cliff and not able to function at the level I'm sure they wanted to function at. For the new breed of astronaut, everyday life in the confined quarters of the Mars spaceship could turn into a modern day torture chamber. Fiction makes space travel look easy. This is more like the harsh reality the Mars astronauts will have to cope with. I'm into the node. This way I see another treadmill, the bathroom, the toilets, things like that. Life on board is a living hell, crowded, noisy, and dirty. Jerry Lininger spent five months on the Russian space station. He paints a pretty grim picture of life in close quarters. There are no showers in space. Maybe different area, but this is where we do our, the other two cosmonauts did their cleaning up. Little mirror here, of course. Even in best case scenario, you might end up with a little towelette with a little three or four drops of water on it. You exercise in space to try to keep your body strong. You get hot just like you do on Earth, and your shower consists of that. We would, uh, float by each other throughout the day and you'd sort of fly high and another guy fly low because you don't want to get too close to a guy that hasn't showered in five months. There's worse to come. Water is mass and engineers on Earth must keep it to a minimum. And the toilet itself is over this way and it's a very simple design and Mike wants to... Which means the astronauts must purify and drink their own urine on the long voyage to Mars. Something about drinking your own urine is, you know, there's just something that doesn't sound so good about that. You, you convert that urine, they tell you it's pure, it's good stuff, it's now water, but there's still something that tells you you just don't want to drink that stuff. I finally got to the point, I said, you know, to be an astronaut, I can drink my urine, but I cannot drink my crewmate's urine. And that's about it for the toilet. 
sleeping bag sitting right here. This just happens to be the commander's sleep station. Smells and drinking your urine are just irritations compared with the real hardships of sleep deprivation. Sleep is critical no matter where humans go, and if they don't get it, performance deteriorates very rapidly. There's no up or down in space. Astronauts strap themselves into sleeping bags held down by Velcro. Noise levels within Mir and the International Space Station were at times intolerable. The Mars mission depends on a quieter craft. When people stay awake more than 18 hours, they tend to have psychomotor impairments equivalent to when they are inebriated or, or drunk, at least by legal uh, blood alcohol limits. Deprived of sleep, the risk of accidents on the Mars mission will be high. Astronauts have been telling scientists for decades that they sleep less in space. The problem is, no one can work it out. It could be workload, it could be noise level, uh, it may be the disruption of circadian clocks in spaceflight. All of those things are known to do that. And so that we're still not entirely sure all the reasons sleep is altered in spaceflight. You take your, uh, your canned food, for example. Like... Jerry Lineger warns of another important human need. Food cravings obsessed him the entire time on the Mir space station. Ten minutes to eat up a, a good-sized uh, can of tuna. I would have killed for a glass of milk, uh, a bag of pretzels. I would have just killed for anything different. But there's not even hot water to reheat this thing. Eating mush is bad. Cold mush, intolerable. Unlike Mir and the ISS, there will be no resupply ship for the Mars crew. They will be taking all their food with them, the equivalent of 450 refrigerators worth. NASA takes Lineger's complaint seriously and is looking for solutions for the Mars mission. Everything points to the fact that food not only provides that nutritional effect, but also the psychological well-being. Experts at NASA's food lab are cooking up the Mars menu. What's the first thing we all complain about when we go to school? The food. Now, the cafeteria food is never good, so we need to make sure that we have the highest acceptability food system available, since this is all they're going to have. So we are trying to provide to the crew a variety of foods so that they will find enough foods that will make them happy and what they want. What foods the astronauts don't bring, they will grow. Experiments conducted on the space shuttle show that fresh vegetables are not just good for the body, they're good for the spirit. At the University of Guelph in Canada, low pressure chambers replicate a spacecraft environment to grow vegetables. 282. Anyone can operate for two weeks on freeze-dried camping foods. But if you're looking for a period of months of living, of transit, providing those fresh food and supplements to the diet will, will have a, a beneficial psychological and social effect of that connection with your, your diet. I can tell you when a resupply ship came up, they always stuffed a few oranges and lemons in the front of that resupply ship. You know, we were just all gathering the lemons and just, you know, sniffing them, and oh my God, the, 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 uh, the smells of the earth. Food, sleep, hygiene. These basic human needs will be a luxury on the Mars voyage. But living together for so long, might be the most difficult challenge to solve.